Welcome everybody to our first Zoom private applicator training. We're glad that you joined us. There are over 350 participants logging into this Zoom. So please give us a chance to go through our welcome introduction. We will continue to answer questions in the chat, but do know that there are far more of you than there are of us right now. And we will explain exactly how we're keeping track of attendance and how you will be getting your credit for the class today. So maybe just hold your questions until I get through this introduction. I am going to go ahead and share my presentation. All right, welcome to our private applicator training. My name is Amanda Bachman. I am the Pesticide Education and Urban Entomology Field Specialist for SDSU Extension. I'm based in the Peer Regional Center, and I know normally we see folks in person, but that just wasn't going to happen this year. So thank you for joining us online and perhaps learning a new program. I know Zoom might be new for some of you. For those of us on the SDSU side, we have been deep in the world of Zoom for about a year now. Today's schedule, I'm gonna go over sort of a quick orientation. Valerie Mitchell with the Department of Ag is gonna give us the laws and regulations update. We'll have Laura Edwards going over climate. We will have a short five minute break. We're not gonna have a lot of breaks in here. So um, make sure to use your break wisely. Make sure you're comfortable. Feel free to you know stand up and stretch at any point, You know, walk around the room. Uh, we've got plant diseases, insect pests, and then weed management in the afternoon, and then we will finish, hopefully as close to one o'clock as possible. When this Zoom closes, it will send you automatically to the affirmation form. We will also share that link at the end in case something happens and you don't get sent there. But there is an affirmation form at the very end that is required for you to fill out to get credit. You must send that affirmation form before six o'clock tonight to receive credit. This is the online equivalent of me handing you that piece of paper to fill out and you handing it back. If you don't fill out that online form, it's like you walked out of the room without handing us that piece of paper. That affirmation form has spots to include other people at your location. That affirmation form can hold three people. If you have more than three at your location, there are instructions on the affirmation form about how to email me that information. It really helps us when you fill out that affirmation form completely and accurately. It will ask you for your private applicator number. If you don't have your card handy, you can look up your private applicator number at the Department of Ag link that's listed there. I will post those things in the chat. Um, you can also look at your barcode and it is the number immediately under the barcode, the first seven digits. It helps us immensely when you give us your full name, middle initial, the mailing address where you want your card to be sent. It helps us that you put in your county and your email address. Your sort of affirmation form receipt will be emailed to you. So it is imperative that you put in a valid email address. If you are a new private applicator, Department of Ag will ask you via email for a copy of your identification. Attendance, you need to be online for the entire PAT. I will get an attendance report at the end of this meeting and I will be able to see exactly how many minutes your account was logged in for. So. If you cheat, uh, I'll be able to tell. Um, if you're joining us via phone, make sure to throw your name in the chat so that I know what name to associate with that phone number. I do not need your name in the chat if you are joined under a Zoom account. That's only if you're uh, joining us via phone. If you have questions, um, questions about the content, please use the Q&A little button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you have questions about your certification status after the PAT, please email the Department of Ag. They're the ones with the database and will be able to tell you 
you know, perhaps where your uh, certification card ended up. You know, if we get errors in mailing addresses, you know, that can throw kind of a wrench into the works. I will also put my contact information um, in the chat. We really do appreciate emails. There are so many of you and we only have, you know, one or two phone lines. So whenever possible, please send us an email with your question. We will be able to help you much more efficiently versus us being on a phone call, getting five voicemails and then having to dig through um, that sort of avalanche of information. So whenever possible, please shoot us an email. I will be putting a lot of this information in the chat while Valerie is speaking. So you can also always scroll back up through the chat to get your questions answered. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing on my screen. So Valerie can go ahead and share her screen. Uh, Valerie Mitchell is a pesticide program specialist with the South Dakota Department of Ag. And she has been an absolute rock star through applicator season and generally all year, getting folks uh, tests processed and questions about their uh, certification and licenses answered. And Valerie is joining us to go over the South Dakota laws and regulations. Okay, all right, we're gonna go then. Um, again, Valerie Mitchell with the South Dakota Department of Ag and just wanna briefly go through uh, some updates that have uh, taken place in South Dakota pesticide rules and regulations. And just so that we're all on the same page, of course, I think you probably all know that when I'm talking about pesticides, that is an umbrella term for any type of pesticide, whether it's a herbicide to control weeds, uh, insecticide to control insects, rodenticides. Um, so we see this a lot where people will use the term pesticide and then also in the same sentence use the word herbicides because to the general public, a pesticide is an, something used to control insects and a herbicide is something different. Even in my son's uh, Zoom uh, school, I was cringing because they had used the, both terms, pesticide and herbicide, and they don't need to because pesticide is a, an umbrella term for all the different types of herbicides. And uh, so just so that we're all on the page, same page there. Um, so this is, of course, a private applicator training. So I just wanted to share with you the definition of a private applicator. And this is a new part of that definition in our South Dakota codified law. And that is that a private applicator is a certified applicator 18 years of age or older. So that did change uh, July 1st, 2020. Uh, we've been seeing that coming for quite a number of years uh, with EPA. And so that has finally been implemented into our state plan. And so that is the definition of a private applicator. So if someone is taking a private applicator exam, if they happen to be under 18, we let them know that we can't issue their license until you know they turn 18. So uh, definition of a pesticide applicator also includes that uh, that is someone that is using any type of pesticide for the purpose of producing an ag commodity greater than $1,000 worth of gross sales per year. And that's on property that you own or, or rent or lease. And uh, it also includes hired hands applying to um, their private applicator employees or employers uh, land or or leased land. Okay. Uh, these were some definitions that were cleared up uh, when we submitted uh, laws, update to laws in, and that went into effect um, in, uh, again, July 1st, 2020. And that is clarifying that a, pest, a private pesticide applicator is a person that is applying to um, their own property, and so um, without compensation, okay? Now, this little note here about other than trading of personal services between producers of ag commodities, neighbors can trade surface, surface, uh, services, I'm sorry, 
uh, when it comes to, if you're making applications for your ag neighbor, you can trade services with them. You cannot receive any compensation um, for doing that, but you can trade services uh, back and forth. And that's, that's okay. But if you're doing beyond that, then you do need to um, beyond just applying on your own land or trading service with your neighbor. If you are hiring out at any point, um, you do need to have a commercial applicator license. Okay, so the definition of a private applicator is someone who's not in the business of flying pesticides for hire. So um, you're, if you're kind of out there and, and known as someone that can be hired to, to make applications, then you need to have a commercial applicator license at that point. Okay. So just wanted to touch on then um, what's new and what is not new. What's not new is that the um, you know, pesticide program is uh, administered through the Environmental Protection Agency and it is um, it administered through the Federal Insecticide, Fungicide and Rodenticide Act, FIFRA, as you've probably heard it. And that act covers um, regulation of the distribution, uh, the sale, and the use and transportation of pesticides. And so the first main part of that is that they do classify, they do, re uh, this act does cover the registration of pesticide products by EPA, and then uh, in each state that those pesticides want to be distributed, those states have to also, um, you know, register the products in the state. So um, if you're using a product in South Dakota, hopefully that has been registered with the state of South Dakota for use. Um, that breaks down pesticides. Also, this act breaks down pesticides into two types, two different classifications, general use, which anyone can purchase, okay? Um, and those are examples are Roundup, 2,4-D, those type of pesticides. Restricted use pesticides are, can only be purchased if you have either a private applicator license or a commercial applicator license. So it is illegal for a dealer to sell to a restricted use pesticide to someone who's not licensed, okay? The second thing that FIFRA uh, designates, uh, has requirements for is exactly what we're doing here today. And that it requires that applicators be certified and that they um, receive recertification uh, every so many years. So there's a minimum standard, but then each state has their own standards for how often uh, someone is uh, private applicators need to be recertified. So these minimum federal requirements are set by the Environmental Protection Agency. And then the South Dakota Department of Ag is who makes sure that those minimum federal standards plus any additional state standards um, are followed. The third major item that this act covers is record keeping requirements, okay? And the fourth one, we'll discuss record keeping a little bit here, but uh, the, the fourth one is worker protection standards. Since most people in South Dakota who are working around pesticides have uh, their own private or commercial applicator license, we don't have a lot of worker protection standard um, trainings, but they are required annually if, you, if you're handling pesticides, not applying them, but handling them, um, then you need to be trained annually um, on how to safely handle those to protect yourself and the environment. But if you are applying a pesticide, in South Dakota, 
you either need to have your private applicator license, if that's the scenario you're applying in where you're putting it on ag um, commodities, or you need a commercial applicator license if you are applying on other people's property and you know, hiring out for compensation. So just a quick look at the changes, a brief changes at the national, at the federal level. So this all uh, started in 2017 with the Environmental Protection Agency revising the certification of pesticide applicator rules. And so they did establish some additional categories. Uh, we, uh, the aerial category, which South Dakota did add in 2019. So we have an aerial applicator category. And then the other is um, soil and non-soil fumigation. And so we will be implementing here in South Dakota a fumigation category. And so that is for commercial and private applicators. So right now, private applicators, other than the M44 device, do not have categories. This will be a category that will be added to private applicator licenses. So if someone is doing a uh, fumigation of a grain bin, uh, whether they're commercial or private, or if they're doing a fumigation to control prairie dogs, these are some examples, or a structural fumigation, then even as a private applicator, you will be required to have this fumigation category, just like commercial applicators would have it. So there'll be more information coming about that. It's not in effect right now. So your private applicator card covers pretty much any type of application you're making on your own land or leased land. Okay. But in a, a few years down the road here, we will have a specific category for fumigation just because it is such a high risk category. Another requirement that went into effect federally was the requirement of photo IDs, and we knew that was coming, so we've had that implemented for quite a few years now. And that is why uh, any of you that are listening and watching, if you are new to the database, and we will be contacting you uh, to get a copy of a government-issued photo ID, for example, your driver's license, something that has your picture and your name and an expiration date that was issued by you know, the government. It could be a military ID, a, a passport, a driver's license, as long as it meets those requirements. The other thing that it established uh, at the federal level is that all exams must be proctored. So right now, this year, we have where you can take the online private applicator exam you know, through your computer at home. Um, you used to be able to take home the exams and just and take them at home, but that that will be um, going away here after this year, and uh, I'm not sure when exactly that will go into effect. But at at some point, all exams will be proctored at an extension office or testing location. Okay, private and commercial both. Commercial are proctored right now, but private will be as well. And again, it established the minimum age of 18. And it established some additional recertification requirements yeah, that we have been implementing. So to put that into effect into South Dakota, the legislation was introduced in January, February of 2020. And so these are some a highlight of the changes uh, that went into effect July 1st, 2020. Uh, and just to note, these were the House and Senate bills that were introduced to make sure that we meet federal minimum requirements here in South Dakota. And I just uh, did want to point out before I get into the specifics is that the expiration date is has changed from December 31st to the last day of February for private applicators. So someone with a current license, it, you know, they're good till whatever December 31st, whatever um, year it ex is expiring. Um, but 
the um, my slide advanced there, but um, so they'll that they'll be it's good tell when they're normal expiration year, but like anyone who's listening today, your expiration date is going to be three years from now, and it will be the end of February. 2023 i believe or 24 i think is what it actually will be because we're we're in 2021 and two to three twenty four. so uh, that's what your expiration date will be and then um moving on to application records that has changed to for private applicators so normally you would had 14 days to record your applications, which I think is crazy because I couldn't remember what I was doing a few minutes ago. Um, but you used to be able to do it within 14 days and you only had to keep your records for two years. But now we've changed that in South Dakota to match the commercial applicators that have you. So you're gonna have to now uh, make sure that you have recorded your applications by the end of each day, which I would imagine most of you are probably hopefully doing anyway and um instead of just the minimum federal requirement now in so in south dakota you have to keep your records for three years okay you do not have to send them into us you just keep them in your records however you're doing that whether it's a computer or paper there's no specific form we do have an example on the website uh, if you want a sample to to use but there's no requirement other than the 12 um, things that are records that are required to be kept. You can keep it in whatever form as long as you're able to provide that if you have an inspection or, um, you know, an audit. So that's what the sample form that is up there right now. So three years, you want to keep those in your records. Okay. And just highlighting what I said. Make sure that those are recorded by the end of each day, your applications, and that you keep those records for three years from the date of application. Ah, well, and that was a slide that I probably can't go back here to. These are the 12 requirements. Again, this is on our website. Um, and there is a form that has the all four, 12 of these requirements. So I'm not gonna go through them today, but if you have questions on that, certainly give us a call. And just was sharing the specific law that went into effect about uh, the new requirements for both private and commercial applicators needing to be uh, 18 years of age or older to hold a private or a commercial applicator license. Okay. Some of the other South Dakota laws that were uh, worked on just to kind of help clarify some, some things was the uh, report of damage. So as you may or may not know, if, if you have talked, you know, if you have a problem with, with drift or um, someone applying without an applicator license, you, if you want, you can contact the Department of Ag and submit a pesticide incident form. And that, if it's a drift issue, you have um, 30 days within um, that damage occurring, or in, in some cases, you observing the damage to submit of a report or an incident form, and this is also on our website, um, South Dakota Department of Ag website. And, and when you do that, then that launches an investigation. So um, just a note on that, what our role, South Dakota Department of Ag's role is, is to enforce the pesticide label and make sure that applications are being done in accordance with state laws and rules. So again, um, if an investigation report is filled out or an incident report is filled out within 30 days of the date that damage occurred, um, or why is my, 
Apparently I'm going too slow. My slides are advancing here. So you have, uh, or we have the discretion of, of uh, saying that if you, you've noticed the damage, you know, within that 30 days, or it may be after the 30 days, but you've noticed damage, um, that can also be taken into consideration. And at least 75% of the crop must be standing. So there has to be something there for the investigators to be able to go out and investigate. And uh, so when an investigation, when you do launch an invest or a, a complaint, uh, the investigation is launched, an ag inspector is assigned to the case and, and they will go out and review the applicator records from around the area, make sure, um, you know, that to, to see what has uh, happened, if uh, what labels were being used when the application was being made, the weather, the wind speed, those are all kind of major things. Um, so they will go out, they'll observe whatever damage there is, they'll take samples, they'll take photos, and um, here's an example of one. And then if there is no action needed, if the label was followed, if um, you know everyone was licensed, if everyone kept their records, then there you will get a summary letter and if there's enforcement action you will get notice of what that is as well whether it's a warning or a you know a civil or criminal um, sanctions you will get information about that just a note of drift information in 2020 pesticides 70 uh, investigations uh, 17 of those dicamba related which is down from prior years. Uh, and then there was also 11 fertilizer spills that were investigated. So 84 total cases, which is way down uh, from prior years because of some dicamba issues. So JD Farley is our enforcement specialist and that is who um, you would actually, the, the form would be submitted to um, if there is something that needs to be reported. Uh, the this is again just the the law that went into effect of adding in South Dakota the additional categories so uh, non soil fumigation will be adding that category in and again that will be required of private and commercial both. This is kind of one that's a little confusing, um, but it basically says that an applicator can only hold one applicator license. So uh, if a commercial applicator uh, has, has a license, they will have their commercial categories. And that you can see in this case here, this is an individual with category G, which is the general commercial category and category 15, which is wood preservative. If they also have a private applicator license, it will show up as a certification on their commercial card. Meaning that for hiring out, they can hire out to do wood fumigation, but for on their own land, for private applications on their own land or lease land, they're covered through for most pesticide applications through their private certification. Now we have two different databases yet right now for this. So your card may or may not show reflect this, uh, but, um, Basically, if you have a commercial applicator license and you also have your private certification, that will show up on your commercial license. If you just have a private applicator license, that's that's fine. You'll just have that card. Okay. If you have a commercial and a private and you happen to drop your commercial, it'll go back and revert to being just a private applicator license. Um, but and we may have some questions on this, but just know that the bottom line is that you'll only have one uh, license, whether that's commercial or private. But you can keep your certification for private current by going to one of these trainings like we're doing right now. Uh, and that again covers you for anything you're applying on your own land or lease land. Okay, just uh, look at the implementation schedule of some of these federal and state laws. Again, in 2017 is when 
um, the rules at the federal level went into effect. And then of course we have a few years uh, to get our plan updated and submitted to EPA, which was in March of 2020. Some of the new laws again went into effect July 1st, 2020. And then the other note is that on April 20th of this year, uh, the South Dakota Department of Ag is going to merge with the South Dakota Department of Environmental and Natural Resources. And so now if you see, see the branding coming out after April 20th, it will be South Dakota Department of Agricultural and Agriculture and Natural Resources. So just a note on that. Uh, briefly, I think I'm doing, I don't want to take too much more time here, but I uh, wanted to just mention dicamba and paraquat use. So if you are using paraquat, you must have a um, training every three years, a minimum of every three years, in order to purchase, handle, or apply paraquat. And you must uh, be able to provide the proof of your training in your records. You don't have to turn it into us, but you have to turn keep that certificate in your records. And I think last the last webinar we did, we had that link to the training. And I don't have that in my slideshow now, but maybe we can, maybe Sarah or Amanda, you can add that into the chat, the link to the uh, Paraquat training. And then you get a certificate that you can keep in your records. If you're using dicamba specifically, dicamba, ag use dicamba products, the three products used for soybeans, you are, uh, the label currently says that you have to go to dicamba training annually, so each year. So if you, you're going to be using any of those three specific soybean products in, um, in 2021, purchasing them or using them, then you need to do your training. And there are, again, links to the three companies that have the training online. So some of them are holding a webinar every Wednesday. Some of them it's a self-paced course, however you want to do that. I hopefully we can put that in the in this webinar's link as well. The last date that you can apply these those specific dicamba products for soybeans is June 30th. Okay. That's the federal label and the state label. So these are the three products that we are specifically talking about that you need dicamba training for, uh, the Extendamax and Genia and Tab, Tabium Plus, okay? So currently there, these are only used on cotton and soybean and they will, are set to expire 2025. So again, hopefully we can maybe put in the links to those crop trainings if we can find them from the last webinar we did. Um, but you can give us a call here too if you need those here at the Department of Ag. We can send you the list of the links to the different companies providing those tr that dicamba training. Okay, and as I meant, I think I'm show that that uh, in South Dakota, all ag dicamba ag products, not lawn products, but ag products, are a restricted use pesticide, which means you have to have a private applicator license or commercial applicator license to purchase it and to apply. Okay. This is just the little pinpoints here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but uh, this was uh, the last three years of dicamba uh, investigations that happened. So um, pretty, quite a lot of, quite a lot of investigations over the last three years years and 2020 was a little bit better um, but nonetheless still a few and then just a brief mention a field watch and or otherwise called drift watch and it's a mapping program created by purdue ag de the, uh, department and it is a place where um at pesticide applicators can can, can uh, well especially crop producers beekeepers and um, can communicate with pesticide applicators. Um, so you kind of know where those really highly sensitive crops are 
and uh, this is a, a voluntary and it's free. It's uh, you know, not anything that's required, but I just wanted to make you know, be aware of this and we do have information about this on our website as well. So that's called Field Watch. Okay. Uh, and these are the states that currently are, are uh, utilizing this uh, communication. And that is it. That does it for me. I'm going to stop there because my slides are advancing and I'm out of time. But if you have questions, you can contact us here at the Department of Ag. And I'm going to leave it at that. All right, thank you, Valerie. And I was able to keep up and throw links in the chat to the Paraquat training, a couple of the companies that have Dicamba training still going on, and also the link for Driftwatch. So those of you who are joining us on a device, you can scroll through the chat and grab those links if you need them. And you can also either email Valerie or myself, and we'll be happy to send those to you. So